What if I told you I could make answering hypothetical questions much easier for you? In this video, we are going to go really high level and cover four very simplistic areas that are going to help you have success. One, wearing the hat of the role. What does that mean? It just means answering all questions like you're in the position you're interviewing for. Secondly, is focusing in on one framework concept. So building that nice framework, but then just picking one area to start when we get into the solution. Item three, specific assumptions. Attaching to specific visuals will be absolutely critical to your success. And then lastly, the one I really wanna just highlight for a moment, all are important, but using past experience as fuel for your open-ended solutions. What we don't want to do is actually bring in all the specificity of our example, but what we do want to do is we want to use past experience so that we're not trying to ideate every single thing from scratch. For the purpose of this video, we're not going to go through a full example, but I do want to prompt in on a question because I think a question will really be a nice foundation for us. So let's imagine Sue, our interviewer as always, and the question is a large retail client would like to do a cloud migration, how would you help them? So let's go ahead and dive in with item one, how to the role. So unless otherwise directed, which we rarely, rarely will be, we want to answer like we're already in the position. It's a structural item. And if you always follow this structure, it's going to be absolutely critical for your success because any other approach is just making it more difficult. And then the other thing to remember is that the person who's interviewing you is likely in a similar role. So if you're answering wearing the hat of the role, that will be helpful as well. Now, you're not always going to have all the core skills of the job, but you'll have most of the skills. And again, this is just such a foundational item. So if we were to bring in an example here, let's imagine that we're interviewing at Google and we're interviewing for a customer engineering role focused in infrastructure modernization for GCP, which is Google Cloud. So I would focus heavily on just a few items. Collaboration with clients, that's the gamut from initial meetings to approve a concept to presentations to focusing in on best internally focused practices, whether that's looking at use cases, just doing internal collaboration, and then just my overall cloud technology when answering these types of questions. Item two, one framework concept. So I've spent a lot of time talking about frameworks and frameworks are absolutely a powerful organizational tool. Essentially all you're doing is you are highlighting the key concepts that are going to allow you to have success in structuring your total answer and you're gonna do it in 30 seconds or less. What does that mean? It means typically you're introducing three or more concepts that you'll want to focus in on in your solution. But by picking one, it allows us to get way more specific because I need you to go in depth to visualize you in the role. If we're trying to talk about everything, we oftentimes end up talking about nothing. And so Simply focusing in on one will really allow you to problem solve for that one critical area and we can lead with our biggest strengths too. So we can always attach to that one concept that we feel like we have a really, really strong foundational knowledge. Now I want you to have a strong connection to any concept you mentioned. So let's go back to our question again. It's a cloud migration for a retail customer. So after we've clarified, because we always want to start with clarification, maybe we introduce a simplistic framework such as ease of use, cost, security, scalability, reliability, and let's end with automation. And we would introduce all these concepts very simply to our interviewer, Sue, and then we would use a very powerful transition statement such as, I'd like to focus in on ease of use, but is there an area you'd like to focus on? So. We're again leading with our strengths, but ideally, even if Sue pivoted us, all of those areas would be our strengths. Frameworks can be incredibly tricky, and so I'll throw a card up there to our open-ended playlist, which has a lot of videos, including a lot of videos on frameworks. Item three, 
the power of assumptions. Two common missteps. There are no assumptions or the assumptions are incredibly vague and they just don't create a nice visual for me. So we've started and we're in a great place. We're wearing the hat of the role. We're focusing in on that one framework concept. Now we want to bring in specific assumptions. So let's work on an analogy. I want pepperoni pizza. And you may have heard me say this before, but so often what candidates are providing in their interviews and what my clients provide to me is they provide food and food is good. It's okay, but I don't know what kind of food we're talking about. And I want to be able to picture and visualize pepperoni pizza. Why do I like that so much? There's four ingredients, right? It's the dough, it's the marinara, it's the cheese, and it's the pepperonis. And that's kind of how I want you to think about your assumptions as well. Give me those kind of four ingredients, something in that neighborhood that's going to really allow me to picture you doing the job as we get into the solution. It is absolutely paramount. And so let's go back to our question and let's throw in an example. So maybe we assume that the retailer well, they're a domestic retailer that's focused in on sports athletic clothing, creates a visual. Then let's also assume that they're completely on-prem, but have actually made the decision to move forward with GCP. So we're establishing where we are in the process. And then lastly, that we'd like to move forward with a lift and shift approach. This is connecting back to our audience who's likely in a similar role and will know exactly what a lift and shift approach would look like especially we've mentioned it's a large client and now we've given some specificity to this retailer and said that they're moving completely from on-prem to the cloud. All sorts of great visuals going on. So we're continuing again to be role focused. We're focusing in on that one item. We have specific items to attach it to. And then we move into item four, which is past experience, kinda. And so as we dive into this one, What's most important is that what I see again from candidates and clients is that people are trying to solve everything from scratch and that's really hard and it just puts a ton of pressure on you to deliver this great answer, but your brain has to do all this connectivity that's just hard in the moment. So what I want you to think about is what's the last time you did a cloud migration for somebody going on-prem to the cloud and I literally want you to walk through those steps, but we remove the, let me provide an example of a time I did that to let's imagine, but you're imagining things you did last week, last month, last year. It's not going to be apples for apples, right? There's going to be some nuances. There's going to be some other items you're going to need to introduce, especially if you're going from AWS, for example, to GCP, but it will be close enough where we're not trying to invent everything from scratch. And if we can always kind of go back to this past experience, we have that pepperoni pizza in our head, and now we're creating that pepperoni pizza visual for our audience. This video, there's a lot to think through, but the more and more I focus in on these hypothetical questions, these four items will make things easier for you, I promise try it out, definitely practice these items, but you will build massive connectivity with your audience and have tremendous success. Good luck.